I remember when I was in elementary school, like maybe age eight or nine, and I was doing a science project that, of course, required the standard, make a hypothesis, test it, collect the data, evaluate the data, publish the results stuff. And I remember getting some really messy data and thinking, hey, you know, it would be super easy to just add in a few more data points and get a really clear and obvious validation of my hypothesis. And so I did. And as I was putting together my little poster board display, I felt really horrible about it. (laughs) Even though there was no way that my teacher would know, I knew. And Jesus knew, because I I believed in him back then. So I went back and I put in the original data and my result was a mess and I did not win the science fair. As an adult, I now realize that the result didn't matter. The whole point was just to teach me the scientific method. No one really gave a shit which paper towel absorbed the fastest or whatever. But I do think I learned an additional unintended lesson Without careful oversight or reproduction, someone who is more motivated and less ethical than myself at the age of eight can easily get away with science that's based on pure fantasy. All of which leads me to today's topic, this guy, Dan Ariely, author of books such as Predictably Irrational. I last discussed Ariely almost exactly two years ago when a team of independent researchers dug into the data on one of his most famous studies, and they found very clear, very convincing evidence that Ariely himself may have made up data to get the conclusion that he wanted. The ironic kicker was that the study in question was about honesty. Can you nudge people to be more honest by asking them to sign a pledge of honesty before they self-report something that they might be motivated to lie about, like a tax return, for instance? If you haven't watched that video, I do recommend you give it a go because it's a really interesting story of how even his own co-authors were duped, but they later came to realize that their own study was bunk. It's also fun to learn how a simple mix-up in Ariely's choice of font in the data made it clear that it wasn't just an honest mistake. Um, He claimed that he was given the bad data by the insurance company that he was working with, but it definitely seems to be intentional fraud on his part. I'm circling back to this story today because I have a few important updates. First, because the insurance company that Ariely blamed for the fraudulent data did recently weigh in. In July, they gave a statement to NPR confirming that the data it had provided for that study had been altered after they gave it to Ariely, but prior to the researcher's publication. It is clear the data was manipulated inappropriately and supplemented by synthesized or fabricated data, just in case anybody had any remaining doubts. They even applied Ariely's supposed statistical analysis to the actual data they say that they gave him and found that it does not contain a statistically significant difference between those who signed forms at the beginning and those who signed forms at the end. So the hypothesis slash conclusion around honesty for sign beginning and sign end would not be warranted. But wait, there's more, so much more. Here's a second update. Since all of this came to light in 2021, Ariely has been fired from his position at Duke University, canceled by his book publisher, and chased out of psychology entirely to the point where he has been forced to pay bills by joining the crew of an Alaskan fishing vessel. Just kidding, none of that happened. He's still a professor at Duke University, as far as I can tell. His publisher, HarperCollins, makes no mention of his fraud on their website. And this fall, NBC will be airing the hot new police procedural, The Irrational, based on the book Predictably Irrational by Dan Ariely, and starring Jesse L. Martin as Alec Baker, a world-renowned professor of behavioral science who lends his expertise to an array of high-stakes cases involving governments, law enforcement, and corporations with his unique and unexpected approach to understanding human behavior. Ariely, of course, will be serving as consultant on the show. And according to IMDb, the hero will be facing the most horrific of nemeses, someone whose behavior is unable to predict. So like, like a cat? Murdoch from the A-team? A driver on a Massachusetts highway? Who knows? 
Morning, Professor. Hello, hello. Welcome to Applied Psychology 101. Are you familiar with predictable irrationality? Paradoxical persuasion. Attentional blindness. Bereavement sex. Nothing irrational about that. So yeah, this alleged fraud has actually been rewarded with his very own television show that will only boost the myth that his research is legit and also magical. Great, cool, love it. And yeah, there is even more. I'm not done yet. I should mention that the reason why I was looking at updates on Ariely is because one of my patrons, Chris, asked about it in one of my recent uh, live stream Q&As. Chris linked to an article that described accusations against both Ariely and Harvard Business School professor Francesca Gino. Now, I didn't mention Gino in my previous video. She was a co-author on that sign at the top honesty paper, but that paper actually included three different studies, and only one of them was Dan Ariely's using the fraudulent data from the insurance company. Gino uh, was on another study from that same paper. But I missed, in June of this year, Data Colada's researchers published a four-part series showing extremely convincing evidence that Gino also falsified the data in her study in that same paper. Signing at the beginning makes ethics salient and decreases dishonest self-reports in comparison to signing at the end involved three studies and at least two of them were just made up. As always, you know, links to all of my sources can be found in the video's transcript linked in the doobly-doo below. And I encourage you to read Data Colada's uh, report in full, but I will summarize what they found. In Gino's study, the data seemed to be organized by participant ID, which you can see here in the leftmost column. But Data Colada has highlighted several times where the ID appears out of order or duplicated, leaving the data in an arrangement that is impossible for a spreadsheet program like Excel to sort, which means that someone must have sorted by ID and then gone in and either moved or edited those cells. And what are the chances it turns out that those suspicious cells are on the extreme ends of the results, which tilts the results heavily in the direction of the hypothesis, which is that people are more honest when they sign at the top of the page. Data Colada further shows evidence that someone literally went into the Excel sheet and dragged those lines to the opposite condition in order to achieve the desired result. That's all bad enough, but Data Colada goes on to detail three more studies that Gino authored that have evidence of data tampering. And they write that they suspect there could be dozens more. They were just looking at publicly available data. Their blog post write-ups are based on a full report that they say they turned over to Gino's employer, Harvard Business School, in the fall of 2021. Harvard Business School did their own review, resulting in an approximately 1,200-page internal report suggesting that they not only confirmed Data Colada's findings, but possibly found a lot more to be upset about. Unlike the situation with Ariely, Gino did not end up being rewarded with a television show. The studies Data Colada exposed have been retracted, and Harvard updated their ethics policy to make termination a possible punishment for research misconduct, which... Maybe it should have been already, but okay. According to Gino, Harvard Business School's dean told her that she would be put on unpaid administrative leave, immediately revoked her named professorship, and told Gino that the dean requested the university president that Harvard begin proceedings to revoke Gino's tenure. The dean also informed Gino that she would be barred from campus. If successful, this would actually be the first time Harvard has ever revoked tenure for someone. So there we go. Finally, a happy ending, right? Well, not, not totally. I know all of this about Harvard's uh, updated policy and about Gino's supposed punishment because Gino filed a defamation lawsuit against Harvard, the dean of Harvard Business School, and no surprise here, the three researchers at Data Colada. That's right, it's yet another case of an alleged conniving, lying, immoral pseudoscientist getting caught and responding with a defamation lawsuit, which, in my opinion, seems to be simple libel bullying, a desperate attempt to use the court systems in order to silence criticism. Now, I've read a lot of descriptions of the lawsuit, and I 
can't find anywhere where Gino actually disputes Data Collada's findings that her data was fraudulent. Instead, she seems to be arguing that they just can't prove she's the one who manipulated the data in those four studies that she oversaw with different co-authors on each study. I mean... Yeah, maybe the field of psychology is so absolutely fucked that you just happen to publish four different studies with four different scientists who secretly manipulated data and you didn't notice. I'm only being a little sarcastic here. Maybe the field of psychology actually is that fucked. I don't know. Gino is also accusing Harvard of sexism, which is pretty hilarious, because on the one hand, it is absolutely absurd to allegedly get caught red-handed doing something wrong and then arguing that you're only getting punished because you're a woman. But on the other hand, maybe she has a point because, like, Dan Ariely got a TV show. You're the science guy. That's Bill Nye. I'm actually the behavioral science guy. But yeah, it would be like a child predator arguing that it's not fair for you to send her to prison while Roman Polanski wins the grand jury prize at the Venice Film Festival. Like, you're right. It's not fair, but not for the reason you're implying. Anyway, she's probably going to lose her stupid case against Data Collada, but that's probably not the point. The point in my opinion, seems to be to drag them through legal hell for a few years as punishment for catching her. They've set up a GoFundMe to fight back, but the good news is that as of this recording, it's at a very healthy $330,000, and they actually still have hope that Harvard will step up to cover all the legal costs, which would grant them the freedom to pursue what's right instead of what's most affordable. If only our most famous psychologists had an ounce of that kind of ethical mindset, then maybe we wouldn't be talking about this at all. You know, I wonder if it would help if scientific journals had researchers sign an honesty pledge at the top of their study submission form. I mean, worth a try, right? Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.